Hi there, today I wanna to talk about personal branding, and in particular, how to build an authentic personal brand. Keep watching if you wanna find out how you too can build your own authentic personal brand. So not too long ago, I got approached by one of my subscribers, Baz Gardner from Advisor Edge, and he wanted to interview me about, you know, how to be authentic on camera and how to build a personal brand and this sort of stuff. And then later on, he asked me to come and speak at his event, which is actually happening in a couple of days on Friday this week. And he asked if I could speak on this topic of how to build a personal brand through authenticity. And... I was thinking, wow, that's cool. You know, that's so nice that I've had one of my subscribers come to me and say that, you know, I've been authentic in the way that I've been able to present myself. And, you know, I never really thought about it. I just went about my way to to build something up. up. But, you know, it really got me thinking, you know, why why, um, are people perceiving what I've been doing online as authentic? Or why do people perceive anything that anyone does as authentic or not authentic? What is it that makes something or someone authentic? authentic and how can you use that to your advantage for building a personal brand and of course when you build a really significant personal brand you can have some tremendous benefits coming out of it and I might talk a bit more about that in today's call. By the way if you're watching this live please uh, get involved in the comments area over there if you're on desktop or below the video. Uh, If you like what I'm doing here give us a thumbs up Uh, even if you're watching the replay of this Make sure you leave some comments and uh, you know interact with each other there as well. Okay, so as I was thinking about this presentation, I was thinking, you know, what what was it that made Baz think that I was authentic? And I remember during our interview a few weeks ago, he um, he mentioned a video, the, one of the first videos that he watched from my channel that fully drew him in, and um, and it was interesting about this. What was really interesting about this particular video. Uh, is this. Let me just get the sharing. You know, it was actually a video that I was never going to publish. This video, after I created this video, um, I just got this funny, fearful feeling in my stomach that I thought, if I publish this, I'm going to get a lot of rejection. I'm going to get a a lot of, you know, it's just not going to work. I'm going to get egg on my face. In any case, I decided to go ahead with this video and publish it anyway against my internal resistance and fears. And guess what happened? That video went on to become my single most popular video on my channel. So much so that I'd be walking in the streets in America. I live in Australia. I'd be walking in the streets like in San Diego, America. And people would recognize me, little old me from little old Sunshine Coast in Australia and going, Hey, are you are you Gideon Shalwick, that guy with the with that video? <laughs> and um, of course, I'd say yes, I am. And it'd be so, such a surprise, you know, because you know I'm just sitting here in my home office. You know, who knows who knows who else sees these videos? I don't see the people who watch my videos, right? So, so what happened with this video? If you look at uh, the actual video, let me show you the video. So this is the video. This little video here, this is the one that I was never going to publish. And look at that view count there. It's got, you know, almost, it's getting close to a million views now for that video. Now, okay, um, it's not exactly viral. It's not like it's got 10 million views or 100 million views, anything like that. But keep in mind, this is not for a general audience. This is for a very specific audience of people who are interested in making the videos look professional. And so there's been 828,000 people, 883 people, yeah, who thought that this video was useful enough to watch. And, you know, look at the comments here, like almost a thousand comments, 999, one more comment, and it'll be a thousand comments of people who have watched this video of me, the little old video that I was never going to publish. And one of the biggest remarks and most common remarks that I often get from people is that I just come across so authentic on camera and and on video and you know what is my secret and so today I'd like to do my best to try and explain that a bit more to you and help you overcome this fear of building perhaps your personal brand and being authentic. I'm going to talk about how to be authentic. Perhaps you've never really 
thought about that, how to be authentic. It's easier than you think. It's easier than you think. And then I also would like to talk about a really cool tool that I've been using. If you've been following me for a while, you'll probably know what it is. But if you haven't, it's going to rock your world. And it's really going to help you build your personal brand. And also show you a little bit of an overview of the method that I use for building a personal brand. So if you're ready, I'm going to jump into the first point now and, um, and get right into it. Maybe let's just see if there's any more comments before I jump into the first point. So, okay, we've got Rosa saying that it's working again for her. We've got Zoe, 24 karat crochet, saying, Hi, Gideon, welcome. Toss today saying, All good. Pixel Gaming Sync has got a question. What do you use to edit and record your on your PC? We'll maybe cover that a little bit later. So maybe ask that again at the end. Raditech saying, Hi. And Zoe saying, I'll have to find that video and comments. So you've got 1,000. Yes, fantastic. Please go ahead and leave a comment. All right, so let's jump into it. So, Let's zoom out a bit here. So this first thing, the first thing that I want to cover here is this thing called fear. And this relates to anybody who wants to do anything where there's going to be anyone watching it or consuming the content in any way. Whenever we want to put something out there as a content creator or a video creator or any sort of a creative person or anything that we put out there, there's quite often accompanied with that this immense sense of fear. Let me know in the comments here if you have experienced fear with anything you've done um, with your business or with your YouTube channel or with building a personal brand. Have you ever had this sinking feeling where you just think, no one's going to like this. In fact, everybody who's going to watch this is going to give me a thumbs down or um, I might get egg on my face or I might like look or sound really stupid. Let me know in the comments area if you ever had this sort of a sinking feeling. I've certainly had it. I had it with that video that went, you know, it's my most popular video now. I definitely had it there. Maybe you've had it too. The question is, why? Why on earth do we have this fear? What the heck? You know, you think about it. You know, at the moment, there is absolutely no one else in this room except me. The only things that I have in here are, well, there are things, they're not people. What I have here, though, is a camera and a microphone and a computer, right, which allows me to communicate with you guys. But I can't see you guys. I can't see you. And it's the same way when you're creating even a pre-recorded video. In general, you're just talking to the camera. It's not like you're even talking to people. Like, especially when it's pre-recorded, it's not even live. So why do we freak out? Why do we freak out like this, even though you're just talking to a camera? Okay, I'm seeing comments here from people, uh, Reddit Tech saying, yeah, for sure. Um, how to and video marketing saying, yes, every day. Um, <laughs> yeah, every day, right? Uh, Pixel Gaming, yes, sometimes. Reddit Tech saying, every time I want to post a new video, I had that fear. Absolutely. Uh, Rosa for real saying, I have had that feeling often, especially now with working on creating a new channel. Absolutely. Like every time you want to do something new and get it out there, you get this massive fear and this resistance internally, this fear of rejection. Let's look at let's look at what's what's happening here. Okay, so I've just covered this example of fear. What I'm actually going to do in my talk on stage on Friday? <laughs> tell me if you think it's a good idea or not. I'm going to ask the audience um, if one of them would like to come up on stage and tell me something. Okay, and, and hopefully that freaks them out, but then I'm also going to judge people's reactions. I'm going to see who, you know, the fear in the room uh, when I ask one of them to come and join me on stage. And it's going to be a little bit of an experiment. Let me know if you think that's a cool idea or not. Maybe you've got another idea to help me illustrate that fear, that fear of rejection. Okay, so where does this fear come from? Where does this fear come from? Well, who knows? Who on earth knows exactly where this fear of rejection comes from? I've, I've seen theories where um, it talks about us being prehistoric, you know, being from the prehistoric world, like whatever, tens of thousands of years ago, where um, basically it comes down to group theory and that um, if you're in a group and you, you know, back in the day, back in the prehistoric days, groups had power, right? They had uh, a sense of safety because, you know, there's safety in numbers. And so if you were rejected from that group for whatever reason, if you didn't conform to the norms of that group and you got rejected, 
your chance of survival would be next to nothing because all the wild animals would be out there ready to come and bite at you. So that's one theory. Um, some other theories talk about this is just sort of how we develop, you know, and throughout our life, um, maybe our parents, maybe our friends, maybe our peers, maybe on television or, or teachers or, or authorities. There's some sort of point in life where you get a little bit rejected. And it's just the way that our society works, right? You can't always be accepted for everything. And so when you're young, perhaps you get conditioned and you're thinking, you know, that, that sense of rejection and it hurts and, and you, you freak out. So whatever the reason is, the fact is that it's real. Uh, it is absolutely real. And I'm not sure if, unless you're like a sociopath um, or a psychopath, um, I'm not sure if anybody is really free from that fear. So I think we all have it. I don't know about you. I mean, I've noticed from everybody so far who's commented that said that they've got that fear as well. So, so it's there. I think it's a fact that it's there. So the question we have is, um, you know, how do we get rid of it? How do we get rid of this silly fear that often prevents us from being awesome and from being great online? Because here's the thing, you know, just think about what fear does to you. When, you. when you get an awesome idea, right? You might not even think it's awesome because you're already getting fear coming into it and think, oh, it's not good enough, everybody will not like it, whatever. What it does is it squashes you and it pushes you down and it prevents you from having that creative flow and making the world a better place. And that sucks, right? We all wanna, we all wanna have that fulfillment of, of doing something with our lives. I, you know, in general, I think we have that feeling. Maybe it's very buried down for a lot of people, but for a lot of us, it's there, but we're just too fearful of getting knocked on the head by, by whatever. In, in, here in Australia and New Zealand, it's particularly bad. There's this thing called tall poppy syndrome. And basically the idea, the saying comes from, you know, that whenever there's a tall poppy, it gets cut off at the, at the knees. And so the same thing here, like um, our, our, um, our authorities, like uh, the, the prime minister and stuff like that, you know, you're not really allowed to be too cool or too, too bossy or whatever, or too successful or, or too whatever. You get cut off at the knees. And this is, this is a societal thing. I think it's all over the world, but it's particularly common here in Australia and in, in uh, uh, New Zealand as well. So it's there. And then we have this fear. We have this fear of getting knocked on the head. And it sucks because it prevents you from being awesome. And you want to be awesome, right? Why not? Why not? Okay, so how do we deal with this? Well, I have this idea here that I think is really useful. Yeah, Rosa is saying that feeling really sucks. Uh, absolutely. Uh, that feeling sucks. Okay, so, so here's the thing. Um, let me ask you this question. Darkness. So let's just look at darkness and lights. Yeah, light. Darkness and light. The question about darkness, does it actually exist? Does darkness actually exist? What do you think? Let me know in the comments area. Let me know in the comments area. What do you think? Does darkness actually exist? Is it a thing? Let me know if you think it's a thing. Okay. I'm going to wait for your comments while I have my coffee. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm going to see how things are going. Great. Good attendance today. It's a little bit of a delay, but I'm waiting for that. I want to see. Okay. Um, so how to video and marketing says, yes, it is a thing. Okay, cool. Anybody else? Um, w War Productions AU is saying, uh, yes, it does. Bad feeling. Okay, Pixels Gaming saying, I go ha. All right. I go half, half. Uh, you reckon half, half. It's a thing and it's not a thing. Okay. Um, what else? We've got Zoe saying, that's a deep question. It would be great to ask someone who can't see it if it exists. Okay. What else? Who else wants to have a go? It's all right. I won't, I won't, I won't uh, make fun of you. I won't, I won't reject you. <laughs> Hit you on the head. Let me know what you think. Let me know. Let's, let's see a few more comments coming through. Do you think darkness is an actual thing? Okay. And, and, and it's sort of a, it's a setup question for the next thing I'm going to say. Let's see. What do we have here? Come on. Okay. <laughs> DJ Ben Vero saying, if a tree falls in the woods, yeah, good question. You know, does it actually 
can can does it actually make a sound <laughs> good one how to video and marketing is just laughing out loud great okay so here's what i think um i think when we use our senses uh, we perceive something like darkness to be an actual thing that it actually exists but the way that i look at darkness is going to apply very much now to the to to help you in a real way trust me darkness is really just the absence of something right so it's, it's not a thing it is the absence of a thing so the way i see it is that darkness is the absence of light and here's how you can sort of prove it mentally a little bit when tonight when it's dark in your room uh, you turn on a light and basically you kill the darkness right the thing kills the non-thing because the non-thing doesn't exist okay so you come into a room turn the light on it kills darkness right you try and do the opposite you're in a you're in a uh, in daytime you try and turn on the darkness you can't right because the presence of light negates that you can't turn on darkness so darkness is not a thing it's just an absence of a thing so i know this is deep stuff but this relates 100 percent to fear when you think about fear uh, it is not actually a thing it is not actually a thing it is a mental construct and it is the absence of something else and you can probably guess what it is it's the for me fear is the absence of courage okay so it's not bravery it's not like show off or this sort of thing courage is where you know there's a fear you feel the fear but you go ahead and and confront that fear in any case it's just like when you walk into a dark room you know it's dark but you confront it by turning on the light so the way to get rid of fear is to use courage courage is your light switch we just go ahead and tackle it anyway you, you feel the fear and go ahead anyway i think there's a book written on it it's really awesome stuff anyway so okay so that's a philosophical how to fix it right so this courage thing so how do you build up this courage like there's some tools and strategies and you know, like ammo you can you can build up to help you build this courage and this confidence to turn off this fear so that you can go out there in the world and build your authentic personal brand this is what it's about so so here is a really cool tip so i call it the anti-mirror technique can you see that the anti-mirror technique let me let me actually make that in green oh that's way too thick this one here the anti-mirror technique so you might have seen this on one of my previous videos but let me take you through this thing with video and our and I'm going to help you squash this fear and give you the courage to be on video and to be authentic on video just get it out there and just you know the fear just disappears or it doesn't quite disappear but you, you sort of you turn the light on it um okay so the anti-mirror technique is um let me ask you this question first when you see yourself um you know every day when is the most often times that you see yourself and like thinking about it when you grow up like in all your years of growing up where is it that you've seen yourself the most often it's in the mirror right it's you, like in, every morning most people see themselves in the mirror they brush their teeth whatever comb their hair you see yourself in the mirror now that's all cool but there's a problem with that uh and when it comes to video you know being on video for yourself because when you see yourself in the mirror you don't actually see uh, a real picture of yourself. You see a reflection of yourself, right? It's a flipped image. The mirror flips it, right? Okay, duh. But what this, what this does is that inside your mind, you have not a true image of what you look like. You have a mirror image of what you look like, okay? So other people who see you don't normally look at you through the mirror they look at you for real okay so they don't see a mirror image but in your own mind's eye 
the way you see yourself is the image that you have from the mirror. Okay? Now, here's where it gets funky. Our faces, in general, unless you're like a supermodel, is not symmetric in this vertical line. If you were to cut your face in half in a picture, not for real, like you take a picture of a cut it in half, and you take the left-hand side, and you, you, you create a copy, and you flick it, and you create basically two left-hand sides of your face, you put it together, and you do the same with your right-hand side, you will be astounded at how different you look. Okay? And it's just sort of proof that our faces are not symmetric in general. So, of course, the mirror image is going to look different in our mind you know, than it does to everyone else. And, and as a result, it's going to look different when you see yourself on camera. So, when you see yourself on, not on camera, but on video, you see the true, the true image. You don't see the flipped mirror image of yourself. And what happens then? There's a mismatch between that image you see in the video and what's inside your head. And your mind just goes, uh-uh, that's not me. That's not me. Uh, you know, get out, get out. That's, that's, that person looks ugly, whatever. But yet, when you look in the mirror, in general, I'm guessing, you don't reject yourself in that same way. You don't go, oh, that doesn't look like me. You think that looks like me. So, so that's the first thing. So when you see yourself on video, it's not the way you normally see yourself. It's not the way your brain is used to. And then your brain freaks out. Subconsciously, you freak out and go, oh, something doesn't look right. And you can't quite know what it is. Okay, that's the reason. Now, to make things worse, this happens with your voice as well. So in the same way, um, or a similar way, your voice, when you hear it, and when you've been hearing it most often, is when it goes from your own mouth, through the air, and into your eardrums, but also the sound goes through your head, through the blood and bones, whatever, into your eardrums as well, because it's inside your head, your whole head vibrates, your whole body vibrates when you speak. So of course, inside your head, you're going to sound different to yourself than you sound to everyone else. And also, it's going to sound different to you when you hear yourself on video. It's, it's again, your subconscious is used to hearing yourself from inside your head as opposed to from outside. And it's so uncanny when you watch a video of yourself with a friend or with some other people next to you, and you go, oh, that doesn't look and sound like me, and you kind of freak out. And everyone else goes, what are you talking about? That is what you look like, and that is what you sound like. That's what we hear and see as well in real life. But for you, because your subconscious has been programmed with a mirror image and a sound that goes through your head instead of just through, through the air, it just freaks out. So it's like a double whammy. And so you combine that now with this fear of rejection and you go, oh, you know, I look terrible. I sound terrible. Nobody's going to like me. Okay. So how do you build courage then? So the only way that I found out of this is to recondition your subconscious mind. Recondition it. And the way you do that is by simply recording yourself on video, use a good camera, a good microphone, because that helps to put you in a better light, right? And then watch yourself and listen to yourself over and over and over. And it's not a narcissistic sort of a uh, reason. The reason is to recondition your mind for the image and also for the sound. And over time, your subconscious mind goes, oh, hang on, that does look and sound like me. It just resets that image that you've been building in your mind your whole life from the mirror and from the sound inside your head. So once you've reconditioned your mind, all of a sudden you go, oh, actually I don't look and sound too bad on video. I'm, I'm, you, you start accepting yourself and loving yourself in that sense. And, and that in and of itself gives you courage. Then it comes down to purely you know, being yourself, which is the thing I'm going to talk about next, and, and getting out there and giving your gift to the world. Okay. So, so this is a huge tip. It's a huge tip. It seems so simple, but it's huge. Just record the video, watch yourself over and over, and listen to yourself over and over. Reset your subconscious mind. And, and that can do wonders. That can do wonders. Right, so that's getting rid of fear. There's probably a bunch of other things you can do, but I think when it comes to video production and being on video and building a personal brand, 
that's one key thing. It helps you build that internal confidence where you actually, you're okay with yourself and you feel okay with that message going out there. Actually, another little mind trick that you can use is, actually I learned this from Baz, um, is that, you know, think about, you, you compare this whole video thing with talking to real people. When you talk to a real person, they have, in general, two eyes. Like, it's like two cameras. Or if you talk to two or three people, that's like, if it's three people, that's like six cameras all focused on you. Now compare that to speaking to just one camera. It's just one camera. You know, why should you freak out so much when you're just speaking to one camera? And, you know, the other thing is, when you create your videos, you never actually have to publish them, especially the ones that you're not happy with. And you start publishing them once you've built up that confidence and that courage through that conditioning process. So, does it make sense? I hope it makes sense. Let me know in the comments area. Uh, let's let's have a quick look at the comments. Uh, da -da -da. A few comments have come through. Okay, yeah, so Zoe is saying that's a deep question. Um, it would be great to ask someone who can't see it if it exists. Yes, okay, three, four, okay, we've got those ones. Okay, so Taz today is saying uh, fear is a lack of repetition. Yeah, and I think that's that's it. You know, the more you do it, the more the fear disappears. It's the same thing with public speaking, right? Everybody is so scared of public speaking, but yet when you do it, the more and more you do it, the less that fear becomes. The fear is always there for me. I don't know about you, but for me, it's always there, and I just my courage just becomes greater, and it overcomes the fear uh, because of practice, right? Okay, Rosa for real saying, it's dark right now, only light is my phone. <laughs> right, uh, Pixel Gaming saying, same here, uh, Rose. War Productions AU is saying, uh, daytime here too for Rosa. Um, Rosa is saying she likes that idea, great. Uh, the mirror, it's reversed, yes, never thought of it that way. Mind blown, yeah, absolutely. When I, when I realized this as well, it's like, <laughs> duh, you know, um, we just got to fix that image in our heads, okay. Uh, how to video and marketing is saying, take notes, absolutely, yeah. And there's some, some cool stuff coming. This is just the beginning, guys. Okay, uh, I sure am how to, okay, great, she's taking notes. Beautiful flower. Thanks, guys, for interacting with each other. So, so cool. If you're watching the, the replay of this, you know, come and join us. I often run these at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm trying to do them daily at the moment. I'm not sure how long that'll last for, but come and join us. Um, fear is watching the X-Files. Yeah, totally. Um, I've, so Rosa is saying, I've gotten used to it, but I used to hate my voice when I did videos. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you used to hate it, right? And now it's much better because you get used to it. You recondition your subconscious mind. Um, Rosa is saying that it helped me. Um, powerful content from how to video and marketing. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, Zoe is saying, makes a lot of sense. Thanks, Zoe. War Productions, uh, are you saying made perfect sense? Absolutely. It makes so much sense, right? Once you know it, and now you go, boom, now you can build up this courage. And just through this repetition and training and build your courage bigger than fear. Fear is your light switch to turn off the darkness and fear. Boom. Just like that. Nice little analogy there. So we got Zoe saying, uh, with your first videos, as long as you're confident in everything else, content, etc., that helps less to worry about. Yes, that's right. And that goes without saying, you know, like with practice and doing it more and becoming more efficient and effective at something and proficient at something, you automatically build that confidence as well, which also squashes the fear. Okay, cool. So I'm going to move on to the next thing, which is this authenticity thing. So we got rid of the fear now. Now the next question is, okay, cool. We know we found that light switch, how to turn off fear or how to, you know, dissolve fear. But now the next question is, how do you be authentic? Authentic. How do you be authentic with your videos? I want to show you something. First of all, I'm going to share the screen here. And I want to type in uh, define authentic. I might make this screen a bit bigger if it needs to. Yeah, so let's make this a bit bigger. So you can see this definition. Okay. So I really liked this Google definition of authentic. It says here, of undisputed origin and not a copy and genuine. Genuine, right? So of undisputed origin and not a copy and genuine so that's what it means it still doesn't help us to know how to become authentic so let's see what else do i have here on my notes that i want to share with you 
So there's a definition. So I also think another way of looking at it, another definition, is authenticity comes whenever you have your inner world aligned with your outer world or vice versa, when your outer world is finally aligned with your inner world. And when you have that match, that's when authenticity naturally comes. Okay, easier said than done. That's still like more of a definition of authenticity. It's still not talking about the how. So what do you often hear people say? How do you be authentic? Or, uh, you know, what's the best way to go about something? What do people often say? They say something that really annoys me because I've had this advice like throughout my life and just like they say this, the sentence, this cliche, and then I just go, okay, but that doesn't say how. It just still says what. And the thing that people say that really frustrates me is this. They say, just be your self. Just be yourself. Uh, duh, but how? How? Just be yourself. How, 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 how do you be yourself? And this is a difficult thing uh, for, I think, most of us. Reason being is that from such a young age, we get so conditioned by so many different things. We have, okay, our parents, lovely parents, right? Parents in general love their kids. But they can't help it. They have their own outlook on life. So there's going to be conditioning there, right? You've got your your siblings, your brothers and sisters, if you have any. They condition like crazy. Uh, I had two older brothers and awesome brothers. We love each other. But for me as a third child, I always felt like, you know, the two older brothers always knew more than me and sort of, you know, they were always ahead of me. You know, I could never quite reach their level. Anyway, so that had an effect on me. So also your peers, they affect you, they condition you. Then you have the freaking media, television, movies, and then how that affects your peers as well. And then how it affects you as a result as well. So it's a direct effect and an indirect effect from the group norms as well that comes from that. And so what happens? From a very young age, you start thinking that your true inner self, your true authentic self is not good enough. And that you need to be like someone else. And then you get to the age of freaking 25 or something and you think, mm, there's something not matching here. I'm not, you know, I feel like I'm not quite myself. And you ask someone for advice and they go, you know, just be yourself. Just go out there, break a leg, just be yourself. And you go, okay, but how? And all this conditioning has just been so powerful that you just, you just don't know how to go back to who you really are. And the thing is, you know, when, when there's this mismatch with your inner self, who you truly are, and what's happening in the outside world, it creates tension. It creates tension, and, and it, it creates, this is another word that I want to share with you. I'm going to show you the, the definition for this. Define congruence. Agreement. So, oops, I need to share the screen. This one, here it is. Congruence, agreement or harmony, compatibility. So in other words, when you are internally congruent with your outside world, this is when you have agreement or harmony or compatibility. Now harmony, when you have harmony, it means that you are in flow. There's, you know, there's happiness, there's peace, there's all this sort of stuff. When you don't have congruence, with your inner and outer world, that's when you have this tension. And that's that's when you have incongruency or incongruence and and people can see it. They can see it a mile off. Saying, that person is not quite themselves. You can't put your finger on it, but you just know there's something not right. Just yesterday, I met someone again that I've known for a long time and he's <laughs> he's got a governmental sort of background and he's been in the corporate world. And this guy, I can just tell there's someone else inside there and he's not being himself. You know, And he... And he doesn't know it. He can't, I can, I can tell that he's, he's sensing something in the way that he talks and the way he carries himself, but this is, he doesn't know how to get out of it. And I just wish I could, I wish I could help him, uh, but he's stuck. And I think, uh, you know, um, it's so easy for us to go through that. And, and then we become, you know, we try and be 
someone that we're not. And, you know, the thing is, uh, the what was that saying? There's a really cool saying like that. I can't remember. Maybe you guys can help me in the comments. Uh, along the lines of, um, you th I think it's along the lines of, you're the only person who can be you the best out of anyone else in the world. Because no one else can be you. Or something along those lines. Or everyone else has already taken, you know, and so you might as well just be yourself. Okay. So I still haven't told you the how. Okay, and it's very simple. Um, it's very simple, the, the, the initial concept, um, but you can also do a bit of soul searching to help you, I guess, rediscover yourself or just realign yourself. It's actually really, once you understand that, it, it's really simple. So let me share that with you now. Actually, I'm gonna, let me just read some of the comments. Let's just see. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, so Pixel Gaming, hi Gideon, did I miss anything? I'm back. Yeah, you did miss a ton, man. Um, talking about authenticity. Okay. Uh, Zoe saying, I agree, saying be yourself when you are doing something totally different new is difficult. It's like, yeah. That advice is like, it's almost like no advice. So you can't, it's like, if you don't know how to be yourself, how do you be yourself? It's freaking impossible. Um, Soha saying, hi. Hi, Soha. I'm glad that I'm here. I'm also glad that you're here. It's really important stuff we're covering today. Rosa saying, hello, Soha. Soha saying, beautiful, Rosa. Awesome. Okay, cool. So let's get into the how now. Because it's, as I'm saying over and over, it's simpler than you think. So here it is. The lead up to this is that it's not about you. It is really not about you. When you focus on yourself and you think that it is about you that's when you start becoming self-conscious right self-conscious and you think that everybody's watching and everybody's ready to criticize that's when you think it's all about you and that is when you start trying to be something or someone that you're not because you've got this, it feels like you've got the spotlight on you. Who wouldn't feel like that? You've got the spotlight. Everybody's watching. Everybody's going to be critical. That's when you think it's all about you. Maybe it's conscious. Maybe it's subconscious. And I am here to tell you today that it is not about you. It's not about me. You know, when I'm doing these shows, it's not about me. It's about everyone else. And it's about how you can serve everyone else with your true authentic self and with your true natural talents and with the treasure that you have inside of you that only you can give. It's not about you anymore. It's about other people and what you can give them and how you can serve them. It's really as simple as that. Okay, let's go deeper into the how. Okay, the how. And it's funny. I, this is funny, right? This is like personal development stuff, right? But uh, it, is, it is what makes video and communication and personal branding authentic. It's what makes it effective in the first place. It, it's what it is. And I'm going to give you a really cool example in a second. But let's just look at some more how here. For me, it's all about getting into flow. Or following your bliss. Or doing PEFLA, which is positive energy feedback loop activities. Now, I'm not going to go into that. There's a big theory there with PEFLA that I can talk about, but I might create another video on that. But it's all about getting into flow and following your bliss. Now, and the way to get into flow is by following your bliss, by following and doing something that you truly love and are truly passionate about. And when you get into flow, whenever you've been into a flow state, you can think back to that moment and you will realize that you forgot yourself. You lost yourself in a way while you were in flow. It's almost like you just reconnected with the oneness of the universe or whatever you want to call it. And it, 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 it wasn't about you anymore. It was about something far greater, far greater than just you. 
And that's when you get into flow. That's when you follow your bliss. That's when you do positive energy feedback loop activities. That's how you forget yourself. And that's how you be yourself. That's how you be yourself. <laughs> okay? Um, some, some tools that I've used to help me um, figure out what is my flow. You know, what are the things? Like, it's actually really simple. You just, as you go about your life, you listen to your feelings. Like, when you do something or you experience something, is it a positive or negative feeling? If it's positive, that's like in your flow state. That's your bliss. If it's negative, it's not. You, so you use your feelings as a compass to help you figure out what is your path, what is your bliss. But there's also other things like getting to know yourself, like using personality profiling, like the Myers-Briggs profiling system, or uh, what Roger Hamilton has with his Wealth Dynamics profiling system. Really awesome. That's uh, The Roger Hamilton one is particularly good for entrepreneurs. And it looks at your, you know, your, um, the different roles that you, that you, you know, that, that you can get into flow with. And, you know, there's one particular role that you get into flow with really easy. And then two other ones that are your secondary ones. You can do all of them, but in general, there's one of them that stands out as your flow state. And so when you get into that flow state, boom, you forget about yourself. And then as a result of that, you are being yourself. Because you don't have, you don't think about what others are thinking about you. You're just, you just in flow. And the time and space disappears. Not spiritual space, but time. Time just disappears and you just go. Cool. Uh, right. So Soha is saying, uh, my background's nice. Um, uh, Zoe's saying, that sounds so simple and so obvious. That's such a brilliant statement. I can be far too self-conscious. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we just, you know, when it, we think about us, we just get self-conscious. We get self-conscious and then the fear kicks in and we just go, oh, no, I don't want, I don't want to show myself to people. Um, Rosa's saying, I agree and second your comment, uh, Zoe. Um, Soha's saying, I needed to hear this today with this beautiful accent. Oh, why, thank you. Um, okay, cool. So let me show an example of someone that I've seen online in particular, especially on YouTube, who is just doing an excellent job of being, at least from my perception, completely authentic. And you just, you just connect with this person and you just can't help it. You just, you just get drawn in and you just, you just can't help watching. You just want to keep on watching. It is, it's so good. Okay, so let me, let me just show you. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. So there's this YouTuber here, and you might have seen him because he has um, over two million subscribers. It's funny. I think it took him. It took this is Casey Neistat. It took Casey, I think, five years to get to a million subscribers, and then only six months after that, he got to two million subscribers. Now, I really recommend that you go ahead and subscribe to Casey's channel uh, and watch his videos. He has a new video every single day and he edits them himself as far as I can tell. Look at this guy. He is just incredible and he just, he draws you into his life. It's not like he preaches or anything like that. You know, he just tells his story. He tells his story. It's just so authentic. This is like, I think this is the number one reason why his channel is doing so well he's just being completely authentic and like and the results are showing he's got over two million subscribers so go and check him out i've learned a ton from casey you know indirectly through his through his little vlog videos they're incredible so i really recommend you go and check that out as a really cool example of building an authentic brand for yourself okay cool so I'm going to move on to the final thing. I'm going to close it up. Um, let me know in the comments area if you like so far what I'm doing. If you haven't yet, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, share this with anybody that you think might find this useful or inspirational. If it's anybody that you think might need this in their life right now, please share. Share it around. Let's build up this community and let's, let's kick this thing, right? All right, so let me... I just want to make the comments a little bit bigger so I can read them. All right, so before I move into that, let's quickly see uh, David J Jansen saying, spot on, that's hit me two years ago, and since then, nothing has stopped me, and my life has been amazing since then. Yes! Woo! You know, that is awesome when I see that. That's magic every day. Thank you, David, for making that comment. That is so cool. Everybody go and check out David's channel, because I'm, I'm guessing here. Actually, I'm going to go to David's channel now. Why not? Before I show you the last point. David's channel. Okay, so I'm not sure if this is your main, main place, but everybody go and check out David's channel. Um, yeah. Let's 
pause that. Boom, there we go. So there's David's channel. So David just made that comment, uh, you know, uh, this hit him two years ago, nothing has stopped me. And, and his life has been amazing ever since. Awesome. Magic every day. So that's great, David. Uh, you are where, uh, what is it? where did it go? Da, 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 da. You are where you are because of where you, your mind is at. Sulo Jansen. Yeah, cool. Uh, so Soho is saying she knows Casey's uh, channel. Uh, we have Zoe saying, wasn't it Casey who did that skiing thing? Yes, that was him. That was him. He also did that one where he was biking around uh, in New York City and then got smashed by, you know, obstacles in, in the way. Uh, really, that's that's how I found him the first time. Uh, we've got so Soha saying, yes, we like it. David's saying, uh, da, da, da. Um, actually, Rosa saying, I, was, I always try to catch up with you for tips and advice, Gideon. Well, that's awesome to hear, Rosa. So good. Okay. Uh, da, da. Great. Yeah, so check out Casey. So I'm going to move on to the final point and we're going to bring it to a close um and and take it from there so cool let's share my little screen again so the final point here is the method so i'm going to run over this quickly because we've almost been at it for an hour and i and i want to be respectful of your time and i want to open up for q a as well but the method for me when it comes to personal branding it kind of looks like this so i have my personal brand uh, sitting up here oops my personal brand and in my case, it's GS, you know, Gideon Shalwick. Oops, let's make that black. My Gideon Shalwick brand, um, which, by the way, I've been neglecting for the last three years. For the last three years, I've been, been totally neglecting my personal brand. And only this year, I'm getting back into it again. That's why I'm doing these videos. Um, but um, you know, my personal brand is the thing that really becomes the umbrella over everything else that I'm doing. And then from there, you can have your other sub-brands. You know, you could have... Uh, let's make this in red. So, so this, this, these here are your sub brands. So, in my case, for example, it's V-Roll, it's Splashio, it's um, you know what uh, rapid video blogging, uh, you know what other whatever I have become a blogger as well, you know whatever other um, brands I built there. So it's either a brand or a product or a service that you can put here underneath your umbrella brand. And each of these sub brands or sub products and services, they build their own audience audiences as well. So you're building audience for both your personal brand, but also each of these individual brands, once you get to that stage, can build their own audiences individually as well. But it all, for me, starts here with your personal brand and building that audience and connection. Because what happens is you can pass the trust that you build up in your personal brand, you can transfer that trust and relationship over to your other brands very easily. It's really awesome. Okay, so so this is in general how I like setting things up. And as I said, I've been neglecting this GS brand. I've been really focused in on, on this, this V-Roll brand and the Splashio brands for the last three years or so. But then it's been at the cost a little bit of of the GS one, so I'm having a re revisit on my personal brand because I know that this this is really the umbrella. This is where things are at, and it allows me to create these other sub brands. So that's one nice way of looking at it. Now I want to share with you. Um, actually, before I do that, before I share the tools, I just want to show you sort of the way it looks for me and the way that I do it. Um, and and there's many different ways of doing it, but this is why I look at it. So you've got your, you know, the people here your target audience. And they're all here ready to, to experience you, the true you, your personal brand. They might even be searching for you. And so you just gotta go and meet them. You gotta go and meet them somewhere. And in my case, I like YouTube, but you can also have Facebook, Twitter, um, Snapchat, Instagram, etc. whatever else. Uh, in general, I recommend you focus on one as your major one and use the other ones as complementary ones. So for me, it's it's YouTube. I love YouTube. I love what it offers and, and the way it's set up. And um, this is where I build my audience. This is what I use for building my audience. I have all my content on here. That's where my content goes first. I build a conversation there. I build a community there. Uh, and you can do the same with all these other platforms as well. But then the next extremely important thing in this is that you have to redirect this audience at some point it doesn't have to be every time you do a content piece you have to direct them into your own asset 
And for me, oftentimes, or in most cases, this is my email database. Database, sorry. Okay, so I get people in here. And the reason for this is because you know, you're kind of on rented ground. Whether you're using Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or Snapchat, you don't own those platforms, right? You don't own them, but you can use them to your advantage to build an audience. Well, what if you lose your channel or you lose your profile, whatever? Boom, that audience is gone overnight. So you've got to redirect them. You have to uh, redirect them to something that you own and control. And then from there, what I often do is I... I use that as a snowball effect, as a feedback loop. I send people from my email over to my YouTube videos. And of course, you can also then have control over where else you send them, maybe to offers or, you know, products or, you know, causes, whatever you want to do. You have tremendous power once you have an email database like this because you can send an email, people can, uh, you know, open it up and respond very quickly. To me, still, this is the biggest the biggest, most effective thing you can do on an online business or for your personal brand is to build your email database. And of course, when it comes to video advertising, you can use this list for custom audiences. On like, you can upload your email lists onto AdWords and Facebook and Twitter and advertise to those people if you want to. So it becomes extremely important to build this database of your own. But it all starts here with your audience, who they are, connects with you, who you are, your authentic self, and then boom, you redirect them at some point to your, and on regular intervals, to your own database. And that's by often giving away like a free ebook or a, or a little video, you know, or, or something, a little training course, just to get people into your world. I don't want to go into too much detail here, but that's basically how I set it up. And, um, and then now finally for the tool. So, as you probably can guess from you know, the last two weeks or the last month, uh, I've been really experimenting a lot and playing around and having a lot of fun with live video streaming. To me, there's nothing that engages as much as live video streaming on the internet. Nothing. Nothing comes close to it. Look at you guys now. We've, had, we've got 15 people watching this now. Um, I wonder if I can share this with you guys. So it's not a big crowd, but I bet you guys are pretty engaged. You know, pretty engaged. I want to just sort of prove this with statistics. Hopefully I don't fall flat on my face. Uh, can I get access to it? Yeah, I think I can. So I wonder if I can show you guys this. Let me see if I can bring it up on my screen. If I can and it looks any good, I will share it. Otherwise, if it's embarrassing, I'm not going to share it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. So where are the analytics? Here we go. Okay, so there we go. So here is here is the stats for today's call. This is still happening right now, right? Look at the engagement here. Like so there's you know the same sort of very similar number of people that have stayed throughout this call. Now I see a very similar trend when I run this much bigger. So when I promote this out to my bigger audience, you know, instead of being 15 people, it'll be like 300 or 400 or 500 people. And what I notice, you know, it has a nice curve up there, and then it stays. People just stay. Now think about this in 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 comparison to a a three minute long video that you publish on YouTube. People only watch for three minutes. A lot of you guys, you've been watching this now for like an hour. Tell me in the comments area if you've been on the call right from the beginning. Let me just say, just say, just say beginning in the comments area, um, and and that'll give me an indication of you know how many of you guys have been watching this right from the beginning. So this is what live video does. People watch you for a freaking hour because it's so engaging. It's engaging by nature. It's it's live. So the reason why I think one of the reasons at least is so engaging is because you don't know what's going to happen next. I don't even know what's going to happen next. This is happening live in real time. We can't predict the future, right? And there's something about that that we just, as human beings, love. That's why we love going to live sports shows, why we love watching live events, sports events on TV. You don't want to watch the replay. You can, but it's not as, it's not as exciting, you know, because you just, you're just there at the cusp of reality and you, you can't tell the future. You, like, you don't know. The future hasn't happened yet and you're experiencing it right now. You're in the now. This is why we love it so much. So for me, live video is where it's at. 
So I've been using all sorts of really cool tools. I've been experimenting this for a number of years now, actually. I've been loving it. But more recently, especially on YouTube, I've discovered a really cool app. And I think there's going to be lots more apps coming out. But on my iPhone, there's a really cool app called Wirecast Go. Let's see if you can see it. Wirecast Go, please focus. Mm, not sure if it's going to focus for us. But anyway, it's this one here. Uh, other side. Wirecast Go. And you open up this app. If I was clever, I probably would have been able to share my iPhone screen with you as well. But actually, why don't I? Why don't I? I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this live. How, how tricky is that? So, trust this computer. Check this. <laughs> I am going to show you my phone screen live. Let me just set it up. Um, hopefully, I can do this. Come on. You know you want to. You know you want to. Quick time. Let me just close. Quick time. And quit quick time and just open it up again. Sorry, bear with me because I, I want to show you this app. It is really cool. Okay, and I'm going to open that up like that and see if my phone is in there. Um, okay. It's not showing up and I'm very disappointed about that. Okay, so I can't show you, unfortunately. Okay, but anyway, so I'll just show you like this. So you, you open up the app. Uh, it's, there's a free version, but you can also pay like five bucks or whatever, and you get the, the more advanced version. And then you see that. You see, you see the camera, and you tap on it once. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff you can do, like you can add different layers. For example, if you want to have your logo in one of the corners, or if you click on that, you can have you know, a logo, whatever else. You have up to three levels, uh, layers to choose from. You can also have different shots. Like for example, here, I can have a shot of a photo that I've taken. It's pretty cool. It doesn't have video yet, so I can't wait for them to bring that in. I've asked them to add it. Hopefully they listen to me. Um, but you can also, let's put back on to the camera. And then to go live, all you have to do is press this button and then go, actually you can see this is, this is actually pulling in today's live event. But I, won't, I can't stream to that same event while I'm streaming this live. And then you can go start new, start new broadcast and type in a title, description. Say if you want to have public or private or unlisted. And then once you're done with that, if you go start, it starts streaming to your channel live right away. That's it. And you can talk into your camera and connect with your audience. That's it. It takes like a minute to set up. It's incredible. It's incredible. So you need a good internet connection. You need for Wirecast Go an iPhone at the moment, but they'll probably have something for Android. There's one uh, on Android called um, Live in 5 that my friend Justin Brown tested. He said it's pretty good. I haven't tested it myself, but Android Live in 5 apparently is a good app to do for that, to use for that. And um, yeah, perhaps worth your while to check out. So that's it. So let's bring it all together. So I'm going to end this now. Um, and then we might do Q&A. Actually, let's just quickly read through some comments and then we'll, we'll bring it all together. Okay. So what do we have here? We have... Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we have a lot of people posting here that um, you've been here right from the beginning. Um, and Zoe's saying she came in five minutes later. Um, okay, positive. Yeah, uh, Toss today's positive energy is contagious. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So a lot of people, so a ton of you have been here since the beginning. Like percentage-wise, it seems like a lot of you guys. So one, let's see, one, two, three, uh, four, five. Did I do that right? Five out of 15. I'm not sure if the other guys are just not commenting, but that's not too bad. Five out of 15, I guess there's a, that's a third of you that have watched right from the beginning. That's like a long time out of your day to just watch this. Okay, Eden, the digit guy just came in, dropped kids off. Okay, you missed out a lot of cool stuff, Eden. Uh, but anyway, you can watch the replay. Um, we have Eden, the DJ guy, saying we stay engaged for fear of missing out on something. Absolutely, yeah. That's I actually thanks for reminding me. This live thing, you know, we we like if you're not there live, you, you like you have this fear of missing out on something awesome happening, right? So this is why live is so engaging. Absolutely, this is that's live TV. Absolutely. So we have Eden saying I've done a few live streams. I remind myself 
of Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, he kept on blogging even when he had low viewer numbers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at Casey, Casey Neistat that I sh showed as an example. It took him five years to get to a million subscribers of, I think, pretty much every day uploading a video. Every day. And then, you know, after that, six months later, he had like two million subscribers. Incredible. Okay. Um, yeah, so... I'm not sure if you guys are commenting about this app, Rosa and David. Yeah, it is awesome. It is really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm using a more professional setup here for today's call. But if you just off the cuff want to create content real quick, that is like the most awesome app. I even use it for creating family videos. I do, you know, I stream them as unlisted. And then I can send that link right away to my family. Boom, immediately. And they can watch the video and they can sort of be there with us at the same time. Uh, okay, having video would be huge, right, says Eden. Absolutely. Um, and we're going to do Q&A. Absolutely. We'll do that in a second. Um, so there's a bit of buffering. Uh, David's saying just installed live in five. Yeah, give it a go. Let us know how, how, how it goes for you. Okay, so let's bring this all together and then we'll have Q&A. So at the beginning, I talked about that video that I was never going to upload because I had so much fear that it's not good enough or you know people would criticize me or reject me. I ended up doing it anyway. The video got 800,000 views. Boom. And and part of it was because my, my reason for not uploading it was because I was, you know, I made some mistakes. I was sort of just, it was more real, more sort of a raw kind of a video. And I thought, it's not perfect. I'm, I don't want to get it up there. But because I uploaded it with mistakes and warts and all, it seemed like it really hit, hit the chord. It was a good topic as well, by the way. But, you know, it's a video that I, the point is I was never going to upload it. And I went ahead and did it and boom, that authenticity shone through and people loved it. And the thing just got shared and shared and shared. And who wouldn't want to have 800,000 people come to their business and, and check out what they're doing and build a relationship with you? Who wouldn't? Okay. Then I talked about this thing that stops us from doing it, the fear, the fear of doing it. I talked about, you know, um, darkness being the absence of light and fear just basically being the absence of courage. And you can use courage to like turn off fear or to dissolve fear. It's, like, it's your light switch. It's your lightsaber <laughs> to like get rid of fear. Or to dissolve it and um, and we talked about uh, next up was authenticity how to do that and just be yourself right but how do you be yourself well I think the way to be yourself is to forget yourself and how do you forget yourself it's by getting into flow getting into a flow state and then finally I talked about my overall method for doing it with using my personal brand as the umbrella brand and then my other brands as sub brands underneath that brand and then building it through YouTube, Facebook, my social media channels, but sending people to my own database that I can control and that I own in case something else happens. And then I showed you the awesome tool, the Go, the Wirecast Go app on your phone or the Live and Five app on Android. There's going to be lots more coming out. Maybe YouTube will bring out their own app as well. I mean, I love doing it on YouTube because it's got the awesome infrastructure. There's Periscope, Meerkat, Blab, whatever else as well. But I think I've got my money on YouTube at this stage. But they need to move. They need to move on it. Anyway, that's bringing it all together. And I think when you can do this, when you can remove that fear of building your personal brand and being on video, being out there, when you can be your authentic, true self, and when you can use the right tools and methods together with that, you can just crush it. You can just absolutely crush it like we have David there, David Jansen saying, every day is magical. Every day is magical. So I'd encourage you, I'd challenge you to, um, to build up this courage so that you can get rid of fear. I encourage you to find out your flow state, find out your bliss so that you can forget about yourself and just be yourself in the process and, and build it up using these awesome tools we have at our fingertips today. Thank you so much for watching. You've been an awesome crowd. I'm going to jump into Q&A next. And uh, for our uh, replay viewers, I'll probably have that separated into another video if you want to watch that. So let's end this now, but I'll come back for Q&A in a second.